So I thought I'd make a video on Sebastian Vettel and Red Bull's dominance in F1 from 2010 to 2013. In 2007, Red Bull signed a 20-year-old Sebastian Vettel to its development team Toro Rosso, starting at the 2007 Hungarian Grand Prix, replacing Scott Speed. Speed would later join Red Bull's NASCAR program. In the rain-soaked Japanese Grand Prix at Fuji, Vettel was in position for the team's first ever podium, but this would have to wait as he crashed into Red Bull driver Mark Webber. Spoiler alert, this won't be the only time this happens. In the next race in China, Vettel continued to show skill as he started 17th and drove up to a 4th place finish. In Monza, Italy, on September 14th, 2008, Sebastian Vettel would make history, becoming the youngest driver to win an F1 race at 21 years and 74 days old. This was the first and only win for Toro Rosso until Pierre Gasly would win at Monza in September 2020, driving a rebranded Alfa Tori. Toro Rosso co-owner Gerhard Berger had this to say on Vettel. As he proved today, he can win races but he's gonna win world championships. He is a cool guy. What also makes this win impressive is the Red Bull junior team Toro Rosso won before Red Bull actually did. In 2009, David Coulthard retired from Red Bull and was replaced with Sebastian Vettel. At the Chinese Grand Prix, Vettel would score Red Bull's first ever pole and would also score the team's first ever win. Vettel became the youngest driver to win with two different teams at 21 years and 287 days old. Vettel would also win at Silverstone, Suzuka, and Yas Marina. Weber would also finish second at Silverstone. Weber would win at Germany with Vettel second. Weber would also get a win in Brazil. Vettel would finish second in the driver standings behind Braun GP's Jensen Button. Weber would finish fourth in the standings and Red Bull would take second in the constructor standings. In 2010 at the Australian Grand Prix, Vettel was appointed head of the Grand Prix Drivers Association, a position he still currently holds as of 2020 alongside Haas F1 driver Roman Grosjean. Vettel would win his first race of 2010 at Malaysia. Red Bull would score a 1-2 at Monaco with Mark Webber winning and Vettel second. At the Turkish Grand Prix, friction between Vettel and Weber would arise. Vettel made a move to pass Weber, who was leading, and the two drivers collided, and neither driver accepted fault for the incident. Vettel would win at the European Grand Prix at Valencia. At the British Grand Prix, Vettel would suffer a puncture and finish 7th, but Weber would get the win. In Japan, Vettel qualified on pole and went on to win. Vettel became the youngest driver to win twice on the same track at 23 years and 98 days old. At the Korean Grand Prix, Vettel looked on pace to get his fourth win after leading the first 45 laps, but due to an engine failure, he would be forced to retire. Going into the final two races, Fernando Alonso held an 11-point lead over Mark Webber and 25 points over Sebastian Vettel, who was dropped down to fourth after his retirement in Korea. Vettel would win in Sao Paulo with Webber second. This secured Red Bull their first ever Constructors World Championship. Mark Webber would cut Alonso's lead to just 8 points, while Vettel would jump up to third, cutting his deficit to 15 points to Alonso. In the final race at Abu Dhabi, Vettel would get a much needed win, with Fernando Alonso finishing 7th. Vettel would win his first Drivers' cha Championship by 4 points, jumping v Webber and Al uh, Alonso. Vettel and Weber combined for 9 wins and 20 podiums in 2010. Vettel returned to Red Bull in 2011 alongside Mark Weber. Vettel started off 2011 with back-to-back -back wins in Australia and Malaysia and a solid second in China. Vettel would then score back-to-back -back wins at Turkey and Spain. In Monaco, Vettel pitted from the lead, but due to a radio malfunction, he was not able to communicate with his team, and the stop was slow. This resulted in giving the lead to Jensen Button. Due to this, Vettel tried to one-stop the race and ran an impressive 56 laps on soft tires. Alonso and Button were able to catch Vettel, but due to how narrow Monaco is, they were unable to pass. The red flag came out with 6 laps to go due to a rack and under F1 rules teams are allowed to change tires, and so this allowed Vettel to get much needed new tires. The new tires allowed Vettel to hang on for the win. Vettel would get the pole for Valencia and follow this up with the fastest lap of the race and the win. 
The FIA implemented a rule change prior to the British Grand Prix targeting blown diffusers. Red Bull said that they thought this would cost them half a second per lap. Despite the loss in speed, Vettel would finish second and Weber third. Vettel would win in Belgium, Italy, and Singapore. In Italy, Vettel would take his 10th pole of the season, thus tying Art and Senna's record for 10 poles in two separate seasons. Vettel would get a third in Japan. This secured his second driver's championship with four races remaining. Vettel would add to his wins in Korea and India. In Brazil, Vettel notched his 15th pole, setting a new record. Vettel would finish 2011 with 11 wins, 17 podiums, and 15 poles. He won the championship by 122 points over Jensen Button. His 392 points were also a record. Mark Webber only won one race but added 10 podiums. There was a Red Bull on the podium for every race except Abu Dhabi. Nine of the races had a double Red Bull podium. Red Bull would win their second Constructors title by 153 points over McLaren. 2012 saw Red Bull return their same driver lineup for the fourth straight season because, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Vettel finished second in Australia to start the season. In Malaysia, Vettel would tangle with Narayan Kardakayan and would finish outside the points. This was the first race that he was running at the finish and didn't score points at since Belgium 2010. Vettel would win in Bahrain for his first of the season. Vettel would then have four straight races without a podium, including a retirement from Valencia. Vettel finished second in Germany, but was slapped with a 20-second time penalty for overtaking off-track, and this dropped him down to fifth. In Belgium, Vettel would have a poor qualifying, as he was only able to get tenth. But this wouldn't matter, as he drove up through the field for second in his fourth podium of the season. This elevated Vettel to second in the standings. Vettel would retire from the race in Italy, and this was a huge blow to his championship hopes. He would go on to win Singapore, as the race was called two laps short as the two-hour time limit was exceeded. He would strike again in Japan, winning, along with a retirement from Alonso meant Vettel cut the points deficit to just four points. With five races left, Vettel would win back-to-back -back in Korea and India. He took a six-point lead after Korea and then 13 points after India. Vettel had to start Abu Dhabi from the pit lane, but fought back to a third place finish. He would go into the final race at Inter Largos with a 13 point lead over Fernando Alonso. Vettel started 4th and Alonso 8th. Vettel would get spun after contact with Bruno Senna on lap 1, and this dropped him to last, while Alonso moved up to 3rd at the end of lap 1. Vettel took side pod damage, but didn't pit as this was something that couldn't be fixed during the race. On lap 3, Vettel would set the then fastest lap despite damage. On lap 5, Alonso would make a mistake and run wide into turn 1, dropping from 3rd to 4th. On lap 7, Mark Webber would also spin his Red Bull. On lap 56, Vettel made a pit stop, but it was a slow stop as the team didn't have tires ready, and the stop took over 10 seconds. On lap 70, Paul DeResta wrecked hard and brought out the safety car, and the race would finish under the safety car. Fernando Alonso would finish 2nd and picked up 18 points, but Vettel finished 6th and would pick up 8 points, securing his 3rd World Championship by 4 points. Vettel is the youngest ever Triple World Champion at 25. Vettel would finish 2012 with 5 wins and 10 podiums. Weber would also have 2 wins and 4 podiums, helping Red Bull get their 3rd Constructors Championship by 60 points over Ferrari. However, three days after the race, Ferrari said they were considering appealing the race results as they felt Vettel overtook Jean-Eric Verne under yellow flags had this been the case. Vettel could have had 20 seconds added to his time. This would have dropped him to 8th and secured Alonso as the world champion as the race finished under the safety car. The FIA actually reviewed the incident and determined that there was a green flag being showed before Vettel made the pass, meaning that from that point on, the track was green and the confusion arose over a lighting panel just before the Marshall post that was displaying yellow. Red Bull and Ferrari both said they were satisfied with the ruling and Vettel would be confirmed as world champion. 2013 once again saw the return of Vettel and Weber to Red Bull 
In Australia, Vettel qualified on pole and finished third. The second race of the season in Malaysia saw tension between Vettel and Weber as Vettel defied team orders and passed Weber for the win. Weber showed his displeasure after the race. Christian Horner, team principal for Red Bull, was unhappy with Vettel's actions, but also pointed out that in the past, Mark Weber had also violated team orders on multiple occasions in order to benefit himself in a similar way that Vettel did. Vettel said he wasn't sorry, and that if the situation presented itself again, he would do the same thing as he didn't feel Weber deserved to win. Vettel would pick up his second win in Bahrain. Vettel got a podium in Monaco and would win in Canada. Vettel came into Silverstone with a 36-point lead over Fernando Alonso, but a retirement cut that down to just 21 points. Vettel would win at Germany and get a third at Hungary. After Hungary, Vettel had a 38-point lead over Kimi Raikkonen. Vettel struck gold the remainder of the season. He would end up winning the remaining nine races. This set a new record for consecutive race wins. Vettel broke his own record for most points scored with 397. Vettel would win his fourth consecutive Drivers' Championship, 155 points over Fernando Alonso. Red Bull won their fourth consecutive Constructors' Championship, 236 points over Mercedes. Vettel had 13 wins and 16 podiums. Weber failed to win a race, but had 8 podiums while finishing 3rd in the driver's standings. 2014, Sebastian Vettel returned to Red Bull, but Mark Weber would step away from F1. He was replaced by Toro Rosso driver Daniel Ricciardo. Vettel really struggled in 2014. He failed to win a race for the first time since 2007. This also was the first time a defending world champion failed to win a race since Jacques Villeneuve in 1998. He finished 2014 with four podiums and three retirements. Three retirements was equal to his last three seasons combined. He finished fifth in the, in the standings with 167 points. This is only 42% of his points haul from the previous season. Sebastian Vettel would be released a year early from his contract as he would join Ferrari in 2015. Daniel Ricciardo, however, was able to find more success with wins in Canada, Hungary, and Belgium. He also had eight podiums on his way to a, a third place in the driver's standings. Red Bull would finish second in the constructor's standings, 296 points behind Mercedes. Red Bull's dominance in F1 came to an end as Mercedes would take over and start their dominance. From 2009 through 2014, Red Bull won 50 races, a 44.24 win percentage during this time. They had a combined 111 podiums between their two drivers. Despite Red Bull being so successful during this time, I think it provided some great racing, in particular 2012. 2012 was probably the most exciting season of F1 in a really long time, and the championship came down to the very end. So now, you've heard from me, and now I want to hear from you. What do you think about Red Bull's dominance from 2010 to 2013? Thanks for watching, and until next time, so long everybody.